Today's video is sponsored by Uppercase Designs. What's up YouTube and welcome to another draw along with me where today we're going to create an Easter bunny design. Now as always you can follow along with the exact same colours using the provided palette. It's available over my Patreon completely free and it's a link to in the description down below. In there you'll also find a stencil guide as well but everything else is built into Procreate. No additional brushes needed, everything else is built in. So you'll find the canvas size, the palette and the stencil guide all available over on my Patreon. Again completely free. Make sure to tag me in your finished creations, of course, when you're done with today's design over on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, everywhere you can find me. But you can also come and share your work in my Discord, which is completely free to join and one of the best places of where you can share your work with other Procreate enthusiasts. And of course, if you want to support the channel, but most importantly, you get access to a catalogue of over 100 Patreon exclusive tutorials, you can come and find me over on Patreon where I post three exclusive tutorials every single month to my catalogue. And again, the catalogue sits over 100 at the time of recording. You'll be able to see the latest three on the screen now. So if you want to get access to that wonderful catalogue of content, hit the link in the description down below and come and support me over on Patreon. And with all that said, enjoy today's design and let's get started. But before we do, I want to introduce you to the Nimble Grip 2. Not only does this grip provide two varying swooped edges for comfort when writing or drawing, but this new version has also been engineered around the Apple Pencil's native features. It now boasts a new design that includes a flat edge, which allows you to use the Apple Pencil's native features, such as the double tap feature where you can double tap to switch between an app's tools, for example. And my favorite part, you can now charge the Apple Pencil without having to take off the grip. How awesome is that? Now, if you wanna check out the Nimble Grip 2 for yourself, I'll leave a link to it in the description down below where you can find all the different colors that it comes in. And I'm gonna be using it throughout the whole of this tutorial. So let's see what it's like. So once you've created your canvas, you should then want to go ahead and add in the stencil guide. And to do that, you're just going to want to go up to your actions. You're going to want to go ahead and go to the add and then insert a photo or insert it from a file, depending on where you saved it to. And you'll see from my layers, I've just got the stencil there at the top as an empty layer. We can work around it from there. So I'm going to go ahead and start off with the background to start with. So we're just going to grab a new layer, drag it underneath our stencil. I'll go ahead and create another one and I'll swipe from left to right, group them together. And let's rename that and call it background. It's always good to separate our elements and keep things nice and organized. Now this empty layer in the bottom of that background group, we're going to go to our colors. We're going to go ahead and we're going to grab the color in the bottom right of the palette and we're going to drag it onto the screen. We're then going to go ahead and go to our brush. We're going to go ahead and go into, we're going to go into textures. We're going to use the Kurawong brush. We're then going to go to our colors. We're going to grab the darker tone here on the far right of that column. And then we're going to go ahead and set the brush size to something fairly large, around about sort of 34% there. And what we want to do is we want to introduce a lot of the texture of this brush. So I'm going to go left to right, pretty much covering the sort of bottom half and kind of blending up a little bit of texture up into that top section. Now I do want to press a little bit firmer down here. I want the very bottom edge down here to have some good solid amount of color to it, good age to it. And you can just sort of run that up a tiny bit in certain areas just to sort of bring the texture again further up the screen a bit more. And then we'll go to our colors. We'll grab the color in the top right of the palette. So it's the lightest of that far right tone. And then we'll go around in the circular motion sort of from this space here and just sort of overlap that, kind of blend it in, try and sort of bring in a little bit more of that lighter tone towards the top edge up here. And again, just sort of wiggle it around in certain spots and just overlap it and try and sort of blend in those two colors to each other. You may want to go ahead and go back to the middle of the far right column and just reintroduce it again if you've introduced potentially too much of the lighter tone. So just sort of mess around with an aged background. It's something you can come back to though, if you don't compress your layers. So just sort of bear that in mind. Now we are then gonna go ahead and go to our layers and go to the other empty layer in this group. We're then gonna go to our colors and we're gonna grab this color here, the bottom of the third column, same brush. And again, we're just gonna try and sort of bring in a bit more of this sort of mixture of tones. So I'm pressing a bit sort of lighter here at the bottom, trying to sort of fade in a bit of a sort of bottom edge being a bit darker and then slowly sort of bringing it up in certain areas you can sort of round it off a little bit on the sides and again sort of overlap it I want that kind of real mix of all the different tones together so here in the middle I'm pressing a little bit firmer just trying to get that nice dark sort of variation and again any sort of random patches you want to sort of introduce you can do just for aging it's totally up to you now we are going to add an extra layer to this later on but that doesn't stop you from compressing these two down if you want to now we're gonna get started on the frame. So let's collapse our background down and create two new layers and swipe from left to right, group them together and we're gonna call it frame. 
And in here, we're going to set up a few different layers so we can create the different objects. It's going to be nice and sort of simple to do. So grabbing this top layer here in the frame group, we're going to go to our colors. We can go ahead and grab this color here in the top left of the palette. We'll go back to our brush. We'll go ahead and go to calligraphy and the monoline brush. And we'll just make sure that the size is maxed out in terms of size. We can see a couple of different rings here. We're going to start in the bottom ring here and just draw in a circle as best you can to try and sort of fit in there. It doesn't really matter. Hold your pen at the end and pop your finger on the screen. And if you make it slightly larger than you need to necessarily, we can just grab our cursor. Make sure you have snapping here in the bottom left turned on so that you should be able to find those orange lines like so. That lets you know you are perfectly centered both in the vertical and horizontal axis of your canvas. If I tap on my cursor when I'm done, we can get rid of that. Now what we then want to go ahead and do is we're going to swipe it to the left and duplicate it. The bottom one out the two, tap on it and then invert it. This is only a temporary layer, so we've inverted the color to the opposite of what the one is above it. Now what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to grab our cursor. We're going to scale it up in size until we can create another ring around the ring that we just created. Again, making sure you hit the orange lines in the center. Essentially, this space here is not going to be used. We're going to cut this out. So just make it a little bit larger than the ring that you initially created and then tap on your cursor when you're done. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to go to the bottom layer out of all three of them. We're going to go ahead and drag our color onto the screen so it fills the entirety of it. We're then going to go ahead and we're going to go to our layers. We're going to turn off the two rings that we created above so just temporarily. Now with our square here, we're gonna go ahead and grab our cursor. So we're using the big block of color. Grab your cursor, uniform option selected and scale it down in size until it fits within sort of that boundary there of the sort of stencil guide that I've provided. And again, make sure you drop it in the center. So something like this in terms of your edge. So you've got a nice little frame around it and tap on your cursor when you're done. If you want my exact dimensions, it's 1849 by 1849, of course. Tap on your cursor when you're done. And now we can go ahead and deselect a lot of the shapes that we don't want in this square. So what we'll do is we will go up to the layer here with this sort of more green ring. You can tap on it and select it even though it's turned off. You can go down here, make sure color fill is grayed out like so, it's not blue. Then go back to the big square layer. You've made a selection of the ring above. You can tap on it and use the option of clear and it'll clear that selection. Then what we want to go ahead and do is we want to tap on this layer here, the smaller, darker ring at the top. We want to create a new layer above it. We then want to tap on that ring and use the option of reference. So now every other layer is looking at this layer as a guide, meaning if we go to our colors, let's just temporarily just grab like a pinky purple, whatever, it doesn't really matter. If you drag that color into the center, it will say that the layer is hidden. So we'll go back to our layer. We'll make sure we're on this layer here, the layer above. So the layer above the ring that we referenced, drag the color into the center. We want to use this purple area now to remove from the outer area. So we can go back to the layer. We can tap on the purpley pink one that we created in the middle and again select it. Then go back down to what was your original square here, the bottom layer in your frame, tap on it and clear it. So once you clear it, if I can find it, it will then get rid of that selection. Meaning if we now go ahead and we turn off the pinky purple layer here at the top and we now have a frame around what will be our bunny. Now we're going to keep a few of these layers though, because we're going to use them later on to sort of crop things and make things nice and tidy. So for a minute, you can just leave them up there and leave this here. The only thing we need to do is make sure you turn on this, tap on this layer and turn off the reference option. We don't need that on anymore. So now we have our frame. We can go ahead and age this here while we're here. Now it's up to you. You can of course create new layers and clip it. That's what I always tend to do. But if you're going to struggle for layers or you just want to save a few, you can just simply go ahead and tap on the layer and alpha lock it, which means you can only paint within the boundaries of it. Now, before we carry on, you, this is completely optional and something you can do later on should you change your mind. If we go to our colors and we go ahead and grab the color in the top left of the palette, if we go to the other brush that we're gonna use for today, if we go into the option of drawing, we're gonna use this one here, the Frey Sinet. We're gonna go ahead and set the opacity to 100%. The size is gonna be set quite small, probably around about sort of 2%, I would imagine. Um, or whatever it wants to land on. You can go ahead and rough this up. So if we turn off our stencil at the very top, making sure you're on this layer here, if you wanna sort of make that a little bit less pristine, you can just sort of run your pen along the edge just to sort of break that down, giving it a bit more of a more unique kind of handcrafted sort of look to it. Now that's totally optional. And of course you can do it on the ring as well. 
I am gonna very quickly just whip around the whole thing and just make it a little bit less perfect. So I will join you again in just two seconds. Okay, so I've gone around the whole of it, just roughed up the edges a little bit. You can see it's not sort of pretty extreme in certain areas. A lot of them are kept fairly straightforward and simple, but it's just a little bit more of a handcrafted look. Now we're going to go ahead and add some color. And as I mentioned, you can tap on this layer and alpha lock it if you wish, or you can go ahead and use an empty layer. So an empty layer above, you can tap on it and clipping mask it to the actual shape. If we go to our colors, we're going to start to introduce a couple of different tones here. So I'm going to grab this color here, the top of the third column. I'm going to go back to my brush. I'm going to go back into textures and use the Kura Wong brush. And we're going to go ahead and start to just make this look a bit more aged with a sort of gold at the top right is going to have a bit more color in it. Now we have, we have multiple colors to introduce here. The most important thing here at this stage is to make sure that everywhere gets like a little bit of this texture. So you, you can leave a little bit of that darker tone coming through in certain areas and it runs across the entirety of the frame. You can then go ahead and either Again, stay on the same layer. We can create a new layer, tap on it, clipping mask it. So you've got maximum flexibility and go to your colors. We can then grab a more yellowy tone. So we can go ahead and grab, say for instance, this color here, the top of the sixth column there. And then on this layer, just start to wobble in a few more. You can bring the brush size down to maybe smaller size, like 23%. And just randomly kind of patch this in, giving it a nice, lovely aged look to it. So just running it around the ring in certain areas as well. And then what we can also go ahead and do, this one's optional, you can create another new layer, tap on it and clipping mask it again. Again, it's totally up to you what you wanna do. We've got this kind of very, very muted blue color, but it almost looks green at certain points. I'm gonna grab this color here, the bottom of, what is that, the fourth column from the right. And you can maybe sort of run this in a little bit more, maybe towards the bottom if you wish. Just like a little bit of sort of variation, again, more tones, maybe on the edges a bit more and just sort of run this in in certain areas just to sort of give a bit more variety again to your frame. Now at this point, we can go ahead and introduce a small pattern that can go in the corners. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna go down to this layer here, so our frame. We're gonna tap on the layer and add a mask to it. So we're gonna remove what we don't want. So making sure you're on the mask here, your color is set to black, double tap at the bottom of the disc if you need to. Go back to your brush and change it again, back into the option of drawing and the fray synet. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go up to our actions. We're gonna to go to canvas. We're gonna add a drawing guide. We're gonna edit that drawing guide. And we're gonna to go to symmetry, change the option to the option of radial, and then hit done. So what this is gonna do, make sure you go back to your layer and the layer now says assisted underneath it. If it doesn't, tap on it and make sure you tap on the layer and go to drawing assist and turn it on. So again, making sure you're on the mask, you can go ahead and just simply work in one of the corners so with a brush size I've got of 3% there, could probably go smaller than that. Let's go a bit smaller so I can be a bit more fine with it, about 2%. You can create yourself a nice lovely pattern. So what you do in one corner is reflected in the other. So you can go ahead and, for example, draw in a line here. I could pop my finger on the screen. And then when I get onto the end there, I can maybe curl that round on itself and create yourself a nice intricate, beautiful kind of pattern in here. So with varying amounts of pressure, you can create these lovely little curls and swirls in here and just have some fun creating some really random patterns and keep them somewhat simple if you like. But having some fun creating these beautiful little patterns, you can put little sort of dots in here and dashes if you wish, just to sort of make it look a bit more pretty. And you can do another one there and maybe another one there. I don't want to overdo it, but if we zoom out, you can see now your design has this beautiful pattern on it and you can mess around with lots of different aesthetics to this. So now that we've done our border, we can now go ahead and move on to our bunny. So let's go ahead and bring back on our stencil. If you need to, you can compress all these layers down of your frame, or you can go ahead and just collapse the frame down as a group. Now with your stencil back on, we can go up to our actions and turn off our drawing guide under canvas, so we can turn that off for now. If we go to our colors, we're gonna grab the color in the top left of the palette. We're gonna go to our layers, we're gonna go ahead and above our frame, we're gonna create two new layers, swipe from left to right on both, group them together, and we're just gonna call this rabbit. Now on the bottom layer out of the two, we're gonna set our brush size to 3%, our opacity is 100, and we're gonna draw in the outline of our bunny here. So at the bottom, it doesn't need to be sort of neat, just don't go up to the edge of the frame. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just draw in the outline of it, and this brush has a sort of really sort of, um, funky edge to it, meaning you can almost get like the fur like kind of bumps in here and unevenness to the fur. So 
just use that to your advantage if you can. And feel free to lower the brush uh, size if needs be. It's gonna run all the way up to the top here. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to keep it in this same brush size. And I'm gonna run up here, all the way up to the top, like so, that's cool. I'm gonna round off the top of the head. And we're just creating this sort of silhouette of our bunny so that we've got something then to paint on top of in a moment. And it's really cool when you create certain elements sometimes that go beyond the border that you've maybe set. So like the frame of your design, like the ears at the top there. It's just a cool little element that just brings the main subject of your design up and out of the design. So it's something you can maybe implement in your own work and different pieces that you create. Now notice how when I've got down to the bottom here, I've just left a bit of a gap because these eggs here, as you can see at the bottom, the three sort of rounded shapes are going to nicely cover things up. So I'm going to increase the brush size up to about 7% quickly and we're just going to make sure we fill in our bunny. Now you may need to press fairly firm here or even go over yourself because we do want to make sure it has a solid amount of colour. We still want to have a little bit of that texture going on though, but you may need to again go over the top of yourself a couple of times. So I'm doing like one big coat to start with and then I'll go back over with a slightly smaller brush size and a, a firmer press this time and just fill in any little gaps and also any sort of light patches too and you can always redefine the shapes afterwards if you need to if you've made something a little bit sort of uh, uneven or not quite right as you want it and then over here you can see i'm just getting rid of like a little bit of layers of that texture so that we end up with the silhouette of our bunny so with the silhouette now done we can then go ahead and now start to add in color I am going to do separate layers because then you can adjust colors really independently and easily. But it, again, if you're going to struggle for layers, just tap on the layer and alpha lock it and you'll have to do your best to work along. So if we tap on this new layer at the top, we'll clipping mask it to it. We're going to make our way along these colors here at the top. So we're going to grab this color here, the second color on that top row. I am going to bring the opacity down to 77% and I'm going to bring the size up to something I'm happy with, maybe about sort of 10%. And we're going to look to sort of add in some of the basic foundations of color and leave the base color here as your shadows. So, for example, here along the body of the rabbit, we're going to bring in some color and you can do it in multiple coats if you want. But we're going to bring in some color along here. And again, feel free to bring that down even further, maybe down to 50 percent on the back here. I'm just going to follow this line of our stencil a little bit and kind of just add in a bit of color there. I can always go ahead and tap on my eraser and change my eraser to the same brush and just make sure that I set it to a size that I can just maybe redefine a few edges like this line here of our rabbit. I'll go back to my brush. I do want to add in a bit of color there though. So I'm going to just bring in a bit of color coming down here, but I want to leave a gap there between the two shapes so that they've got independent kind of spaces. Maybe a bit more color on the back there. And all of this can be adjusted afterwards, but we want that painting aesthetic as always. So we're just gonna dash in a few random little scrapes here and there, that's perfectly fine. On the face, we're looking at the main area here of the sort of uh, the mouth and the nose. So we can go ahead and sort of add in some patches of color, especially on the top edge of this. And then a bit obviously on the left side, leaving a bit towards the middle, but we'll definitely go ahead and maybe just add in like a patch along the bottom. It doesn't need to be sort of neat and tidy at this point. We're gonna go around the cheek. We're gonna leave a bit of a gap though, obviously where like the cheek runs down into the body. You wanna leave a little bit of a gap if you can. Do the same on the opposite side. We will patch in some color here and then up and onto sort of the bridge of the nose here. We'll link them together, leaving the left side a little bit sort of darker. We want to make sure that our lighting's coming across our subject of our bunny here. So we're going to go along the top edge of the ear. On the inside of the ear, we can we can add in a bit of color here though. That'll look quite nice. I'm going to create a bit of a rounding shape here just to sort of add in that rounding of the uh, top of the head. We're going to move into this ear here. So we're going to fill in the majority of that. You saw I do that in one big go there. And I'm going to run that up the line there of our ear where it folds over on itself. And then we can sort of blend the two here a little bit closer together. But you can see now the basic sort of understanding of the shapes 
of our subject here of our bunny. And again, grab your eraser if you need to. It's always good to just kind of readjust it at this stage here and then maybe get back in here and just fix up a few areas should you need to. So keeping it fairly simple to start with, nothing too intense. We are going to reintroduce some shadows at a later point as well. So now we've got that in play, let's go ahead then and create another new layer, tap on it, clipping mask it. We're going to go to our color. We are going to jump straight to a bright tone. You're probably wondering why we're doing that. I want to get some of the outlines in so that we know where our sort of details are. So if I go to this color here, so the top of the fourth column from the right, we're going to bring our brush size down a minute to around about 3%. I'm going to keep the opacity at 77% and we're going to draw in some of the details. Again, this will help you define some of the edges. So for example, this line here that runs up the ear and up towards the top, we're going to introduce that and you can go over yourself a few times. I might even make the opacity 100%, you know, and be a bit brave with it. I'm going to come down the edge here of the ear and bring that down. We're going to go ahead and zoom in here on the eye where we've got this sort of line here that goes up and over the eye here. And we can just paint that in again, go over yourself if you want to. And we can just let that kind of run out. Now at this point, we're also going to start to sort of factor in maybe a few pieces of fur here and there. And so we're going to go ahead and go underneath the eye. There's a little bit of a sort of a lip here where we can add in some color. I'm going to run in a few random dashes of how the fur flows down the face. We're going to go ahead and dash, 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 dash. And this is where we're going to sort of pretty much add all the top level detail because we're going to layer layers underneath this shortly. So we're just going to add in some dashes here and there. You can make the brush size even smaller if you want to, maybe like a 2% if you want to sort of add in sort of lines in here rather than sort of spots almost. So feel free to do that as well if you want to. And then maybe a few just under here, under the edge of sort of the, the face as it rolls around to the underside. And I'm just going to go ahead and just sort of increase the size of that a tiny bit on the top there of that brow. On the top of the forehead here, we can go ahead and add in some lovely sort of area there. So I'm going to go up to about 3% there and just sort of very, very lightly. I'm going to bring the opacity down to 77%. So I'm, I'm fluctuating a little bit. We're just going to sort of add in the sort of general outline of some fur here, which is going to really, really help separate all these elements from each other. So how the top of the head separates itself from then the ears that are slightly behind. So we're just going to go ahead and go around here, creating a few dashes, as you can see, which are then slowly going to get a little bit more dense over here as well. Like I want to sort of kind of build these up. Same principle applies for the eye here. We've got a, a little bit of a swoop here, and then we've got the actual sort of bridge of the nose, which kind of comes in here and sits in front, of course, just like the opposite side. And again, let's just add in a few little dashes and scrapes here and there. You can bring the brush eyes down. This is a part of the tutorial, to be honest, where you could get really, really lost in it and add in lots and lots of details if you wish. You don't have to add in tons, but you know, you really can sit down and really focus on adding in elements of the fur and kind of separating, again, all those sort of spaces of the head. I'm going to add in a few here. Some of those are a bit chunky. I want to bring the brush eyes down if I'm going to create like scrape after scrape after scrape. So I'm going to go to a 2% here and just add in some here, but they need to be visible. You know, they need to be visible. Don't forget how close you are zoomed in, zoom all the way out. Remember to get the impression of the overall look. While we're sort of detailing, let's go ahead and in the middle here, try to add in some elements of the fur again. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some on the top. Lots of little dashes. And because we're using the painting aesthetic, you do have a lot of liberty here. You know, you don't have to sort of stress too much. You know, it's artistic. An artistic allows you to be honestly a little bit more careless. You can be a bit more free with it at times. So we're just going to tap in, add it in. I just want to make sure that that edge over there is probably a little bit more defined than it is. So just adding in a few more scrapes on that left side. Zoom in out. That's got a good level of detail to it at the minute. We're sort of building it up. I can definitely increase the brush size to 3% and go along that edge a bit more just to, again, really bring that in, make it a bit more solid than it was. Bring it down to two if I need to for some of these little furry details. Have a few go the opposite way though. And again, focus a little bit more of the lighter sort of uh, elements of these details on the right side. Of course, we're gonna get into the face here as well, sort of the main area of the mouth. So there's two areas we need to look at. We've got this kind of Y bridge here for the nose. So we're gonna go ahead and go up it. 
we're going to go underneath that line that I've created on the stencil guide for you and then let that kind of run along sort of parallel to the stencil guide that I've created. So a little something like this. So it's a little bit lower than. And then we're also going to go ahead and then do above the line, creating sort of the top area of the nose. So I'm going to just press a little bit firmer in the middle and then let that kind of run out. So you leave a little bit of a gap like this. Again, sort of rough it up a little bit as well. So, so it's not too sort of pristine and add in a few little sort of tufts or little areas of fur around the edge. So you can really mess that up a little bit more. We then have this area here, this nice little curving motion. So I'm going to go ahead and just simply draw that in and then let that kind of run out and get really, really thin as it makes its way up towards the top. And again, just round the edge of that, just sort of break down that perfect line, maybe even sort of on the outside of it as well as on the inside of the line. You can go ahead and just adjust this, creating all these little sort of areas here, because of course we're going to add in some whiskers on here as well at some point. So we're just going to detail that in. I'm going to sort of draw in a little bit of that kind of top area of the nose as well. So kind of just creating that little sort of area here on the top of the nose, just to try and separate that out a little bit more. And again, what this helps you do is it helps you sort of understand where all the elements are so that when you highlight and detail in a minute with additional colors on our subject, we know where to sort of apply sort of the boundaries of them. We know sort of roughly where you know, the color should go up to because we've got all the elements of our sort of main features of the face all detailed in. Let's do the same on the opposite side. We do want this to have a, a sort of good outline, even though it's on what I'm going to be doing as the sort of uh, slightly darker side of the face. But we're going to bring that in and again, just kind of scrape that in. I'm trying to be a little bit sort of careless with my time almost here. So I would urge you to, if you do have the time to, Sort of really spend it in this area getting some lovely detail in there let's just add in a little bit more over the top there maybe a little bit sort of running up the, the nose so it's all quite randomly placed in a sense but i'm trying to follow the contours of what the face and how i imagine all these little sort of details are sort of sitting on our rabbit and some over there too maybe a few more over here now getting a little bit more expressive on this right side and that's looking pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and leave the face for a moment. We're going to sort of move into sort of the lip and then the body. So we're going to zoom in here. The bottom of the lip here just needs a little bit of color on here. And you can just let that kind of fade out a little bit and kind of blend it a little bit by pressing really lightly with this brush and just creating a bit of a sort of blend in there. And then you can go ahead again, add in maybe a couple of tiny little lines just to kind of show how the head and the body sort of sit to one another. And then in here, we're just going to kind of detail. So I'm going to set this to about 3% now and just add in sort of all the furry lines of the body here. So just adding in some dashes here. It's really important that we take care of this line though. So where we've got this curve and you've got the body on the back area here and the front of the body here, we can just go ahead and just sort of introduce that line really, really lightly, but just with some furry lines here. So just some little sort of scrapes there just to separate those two elements. And then that helps the eye understand that the rabbits are not sort of extremely sort of front on. It's got a little bit of an angle to it, slightly leaning to its left and our right as we look at it. And then that way we help the person looking at our design really understand it, take it all in. A little bit brighter again over on this right side potentially. And if you're going to keep all your layers nice and separate, again, you can always come back and do this. The other thing I just need to do is go back up to this ear. I'm just going to sort of fluff this up a tiny bit more and of course do the opposite ear as well. So this one's just going to come down from here nice and sort of light to start with and then bring that in and then let that sort of roll out. And again, I can get back in there, sort of break that down. I can even brighten it up by going over it a few times because I am at the 77% there. I could maybe even add like a couple of lines in the ear just to maybe show some really long stray hairs in there. That would look really lovely. And then a couple maybe up the ear, a couple maybe in there too. Lovely stuff. And let's make sure that we just get around the bottom of this eye. Lovely. And I think I could probably sort of get a bit more brave here with a very light pressure and kind of just brighten up around these areas here a bit more. Maybe a tiny bit more on the top there of the nose. 
So it's all about a slow build up really. That's what I always say, you know, take your time, trust the process and build it up. You know, get some very simple lines in there to get you get your guide going. And then after that, you've got everything you need in order to then further detail should you wish. I'm going to add in the slightest little bit on the underside of this eye over there, just to make sure we separate those elements again from one another. So that's going to be the basis of all of our detail. I think we can leave that as it is. Let's go ahead then and proceed on to some more color. So we're going to go back to our layers. We're going to go down a layer. We're going to create a new one. So it's the third layer here. So it's the second clip. We'll go to our colors and we'll move along. So we'll grab the uh, third color on that top row now. Size can be set anywhere sort of six percent really that's fine i'll probably use the 77 percent to start with in terms of layering on this level of color but we are now going to really build up the color in fact i'm probably going to go a bit bigger i'm going to go up to around about sort of 10 percent and we are going to build up the color in the ears here and all of the lighter areas and again it's underneath those lovely light lines that you just created so now you can really see where you want to implement the lighting going to come along the top edge of this ear here bring that in brighten that up let's add in like a little bit on the inside of the ear just like nice and loose nice and sort of scratchy almost a little bit on that tuft there and then on the face we're going to start to sort of really build in some color here so i'm going to try and do it all in one movement so that i don't end up sort of letting go of my pen just so that i can keep the tones all pretty regular and then over here on the left side, we'll just add in a tiny bit down that side here, leaving a little bit of space for our shadows. And just look at how much more contour you end up with. I'm going to add a bit there on the lip. We've got way more colors to add in, so don't worry if you sort of uh, can't see it coming to life just yet. We're going to then go along the body here. Again, keep it nice and light in there, keeping it nice and sort of underneath the, the chest there. We'll add some on the back end of the body and we'll add some just down that line of the fur there just to kind of separate it a little bit more we could probably make the brush size a bit bigger i'm going to bring the opacity down to about let's go even lower let's go down to about 43 percent here i just want to make sure that this area here has a good amount of color so that you only have sort of the dark tone of the original base color and the second color just in this space here really and look at our little rabbit really coming to life now and I've left, of course, underneath the face. So we've got like a bit of a shadow form in now. Let's go to our next color. Let's create another new layer. Let's go to our colors. Let's grab the fourth color on that top row. Be brave and set it back to 77%. We could probably leave the size around about 10. We can implement the next set of colors. So that's again going to go over where you've essentially laid out the blueprint for your brightest tone. So I'm going along here. So let's just pause for a moment. We've got the original base color. We've got the second color. You can see then where I've laid the blueprint for where our highlights are of the previous color we just used. And now I'm layering the color on top, but not going up to the edge. So you have one, two, three, four. Now in this particular area, there's not a lot of the second color, but if we were to move into certain other areas, we may end up starting to see a bit more of those additional tones in the shadows. So you're just layering the color on, but not going as far as the previous color. I'm gonna bring the opacity down to 50% just so we can be um, a little bit less brave than I was anticipating, but also we can be in control of the color. So on the nose here, a little bit more on this right side, definitely on the right side over here and build up the color again, you know, go back over yourself a few times because we do need to be a little bit brave. But let's go ahead and implement this color a little bit down that left side, a little bit on here, lovely stuff. And then again, or along the body but not going as far as the previous color so we're bringing that color in here and that's it that's all we need to do and i think what we'll also go ahead and do is i'm just going to add in a bit more here behind the head but we're going to make sure that we've left a good shadow under here so make sure you, you go back in and erase should you need to i'm going to make sure we've got a good amount of color there on that side of the face lovely stuff awesome we have another color of course to add so let's create a new layer Let's go to our colors. Let's go to the fifth color on that top row. And you can see from our colors here, we will have one more color afterwards to implement. So now we're starting to really work in the areas such as the very right edge over here, where we want to blend in this color. We're going to bring that along the top of the cheek. Now I'm not going to sort of go as close to my shadows, especially underneath the top of the head here. So like under here, I want to make sure we have all those lovely, beautiful tones in there. 
Don't worry if you go over the eye, we're going to address the eye in a second. Add in a bit in here too, a little bit on the nose. And then this left side, you can add a bit to it down here, but nothing too much. You want the previous tone to kind of rest in here. Notice how we've started to leave areas. We've not added any back here. We've not added any here. We're just building up the color in the areas of where the highlight is. Up the ear again, along that top edge. Along this top edge, we can implement some more color in there. Lovely stuff. Let's then go ahead, add in a new layer. Go to our colors, grab the sixth color on that top row and we'll add in what is ultimately our final highlights. So be set to around about 50%, I would imagine. And again, around about to uh, sort of 10% in sort of brush size here. And let's focus it first of all on the body. We're gonna bring that highlight around quite close to the underside of the sort of chin, and then sort of blend that in again with another light coat there. I'm gonna focus it specifically down here and let that kind of run in. So we're gonna go across the top of the head, but keeping it more on this right edge. And then down the right side here of the face, I'm gonna add a tiny bit into here and a tiny bit on the top as well. Zoom in out. Let's go ahead and add some along the right edge of the ear and especially on this top edge here. And then on the very, very tip up here of this ear. So we're now really just restricting this color to just one side. So now you should have all these beautiful tones in your bunny. Let's then go ahead though and create a new layer. We're gonna go to our colors and grab the base color. So once you've done all your layers of color, sometimes you may need to reintroduce some shadows. So we're doing exactly that. So we're gonna go to about 77% brush size and I think I'll bring the brush size down to about 7%. I'm gonna implement the shadows where I need them. And primarily that's gonna be sort of underneath here. So I'm very, very light with my pressure as we sort of draw this in building that up and you can you can be a bit brave if you want to and really sort of drag it in, but it's totally up to you. So I'm just implementing that little bit of a shadow here and I'm gonna kind of bring that down a bit more as well. Lovely stuff. And you can also add in the opposite of the highlight lines that we created. So if you set your brush size to like a two or 3% maximum opacity, you can go ahead and also introduce some little dashes in here in the fur. So these are like just the tiny little gaps in the fur that reveal kind of the body almost. So you can spend some time really, really detail in this. Really break down some of those highlights, implementing some of the shadows. But let's go back then to a 6%. Let's go back down to, let's go to about 60% now opacity. Let's also take a look at here. Can we add some just on this edge here at the nose? In fact, I'm gonna be braver. I'm gonna go up to about a 90% now. I'm gonna implement that into here. Just a little bit on there, a little bit on this nose on the left edge. Definitely a little bit more of a separation gap there, just to break that down, really layer everything on. I think we could go ahead and sort of bring that round a little bit up into there, a little bit more. We're gonna implement a little bit more of a darker sort of rounding there on the bridge of the nose. A little something like that which we can then also sort of just spread across lightly, just really, really lightly just sort of spread across with like little dashes and scrapes. Again, hopefully to try and give off a little bit more of a furry impression. And everywhere else is looking pretty good. I think maybe we could just implement a little bit of darkness on the ear, take away a few of those colors. And we'll do exactly that again, just up here, just underneath our highlights. So just kind of taking away a little bit of the sort of color there and you're just masking it essentially, you're hiding little elements that you previously created. Now, again, you can spend a lot of time here. So please do so if you wish. I'm just gonna get under there in the mouth. Now, what we need to do now is go to our layers. We're gonna create a new layer and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put this above the layer of all of our highlights. Keeping the same color, you can pick either a different brush, but we're gonna go maximum opacity. We're gonna bring the size down to around about 3%. We're gonna zoom in and we're gonna draw in our eye of our rabbit. So we're gonna draw in the eye here and I've kept it the same brush so we've got a similar aesthetic to um, all of it. I might just need to bring the brush size down to like a, a 1% so I can be, still have a little bit of that texture coming in but nothing too intense. What we also wanna go ahead and do is here in the middle in case you haven't already got this kind of detail, 
with a 1% brush size, you kind of just want to create the middle area there and overlap these areas here should you need to. So just to sort of redefine those edges of the nose area there. And you can make that a little bit more chunky if you need to. And you're overlapping your lovely crisp highlights. So what you draw in now is really sort of the final look to it. And if you need to draw in the other eye as well, I don't need to because uh, I left them quite dark. Now, because this layer has only got a simple amount of detail on it, you can go to your colors, you can go ahead and you can grab this color here, the middle of the fourth column from the right. We can zoom in on our bunny and we can just add in two little quick accents. We can add in a little bit of a highlight there on the eye on the top edge and then a tiny, tiny little one over here on that side as well, just to sort of show the eyes and that really helps bring them out as well. So that is your bunny all done with. Again, you can spend as long or as little as you like getting back in there and detailing it. Let's then move on to the eggs that are gonna sit at the front. So what we'll do is we'll collapse our rabbit down. It's totally up to you if you wanna flatten that and just compress your layers. We're gonna go ahead though and create a new layer and another one and swipe from left to right, group them together. And of course we'll rename our group because we keep things nice and organized. We're gonna call it eggs. We're gonna to go to our top layer here. We'll go to our colors. We'll grab the color in the top left of the palette. We'll go to our brush. We're gonna to go to calligraphy and the monoline brush. And we're gonna go ahead and draw in a circle. So we'll just draw in a circle here. We'll pop our finger on the screen to make sure it's a nice perfect circle and then drag and drop the color into it. Now what you can then do, if I move this over to the left a little bit into this space, if we go ahead and tap on our cursor and we go to the option of warp, if you grab the top middle third here, just drag that up, we can create a lovely egg shape. Really simple. Tap on your cursor when you're done. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and swipe this to the left and duplicate it. So we've got a backup at the top and turn off the backup. The one underneath that's still turned on, grab your cursor, use the uniform option and scale it down in size, rotate it and put it into position in the stencil. So I've got an egg just here. Now don't worry if it runs beyond the frame, etc. I'm gonna show you how you can tidy that up in a minute. So I'm just gonna bring that egg to there, rotate it to somewhat fit a little bit more and tap on my cursor when I'm done. Again, we'll sort these all out in a moment. We're then gonna go ahead and go up to our original egg, swipe it to the left and duplicate it. The bottom one out the two, tap on it and turn it on again. Grab your cursor scale it down in size, rotate it, and put it into position in position number two there in the middle. Now, what I would recommend is you can either go right to left or you can go ahead and do this one over here first. So just move that over to the left-hand side. So this one sits in front of the middle one. So that way this one is recessed a little bit. So it's up to you how you wanna stack them together. So I'm gonna do the one on the left first. I'm gonna rotate it down a bit more. Tap on my cursor when I'm done. And then this one here, is gonna sit at the bottom. So we're gonna go ahead and go up to our layers where we've got this original one that we created. We're gonna turn it on for the final time, but we're not gonna duplicate it. We're just gonna drag it underneath our other two eggs. Grab your cursor. We're gonna go ahead and scale it down in size, rotate it, and we're gonna position it in the final position here on the stencil. So we're just gonna increase the size of it, gonna rotate it into position and place it there. Tap on my cursor when I'm done. So we've got three eggs there at the very bottom. That hides your Bunny and keeps things nice and tidy. But of course, at the minute, it's running out of the frame. So what we do is we go ahead and go back into our frame group. And we had these original shapes, didn't we, at the very top. We've got this layer here, the pink sort of uh, circle. If we tap on this and select it, we then want to go ahead and invert it down here. So selecting everything but that circle. And then if we go ahead and go back up to our layers, we go back to our egg. Let's go to the first egg, tap on it, clear it. We then want to go ahead and repeat. So we tap on the pink circle, select it invert it, go back to your layers, go up to the next egg, tap on it and clear it. Tap on the pink, select it, invert it, go back up to your layers and the final egg, tap on it and clear it. That way now we use those original shapes which you can collapse down in your frame are now nicely hiding everything within that boundary. So we're using shapes to kind of make things look like they're clipped almost. So at this point we can then go ahead and work on our eggs. We've got the far left one over there. We've then got the far right one. So I'm gonna work on the far right one to start with. It's totally up to you. You can tap on the layer and alpha lock it, which I will do on this occasion. Or of course, you can create separate layers. I'm gonna go ahead and jump to the third color on the top row. I'm gonna make sure my brush is set back to the texture that we've been using, the Kurawong. I'm gonna set the brush size to something around about, let's go about 12%. 
and the highlight is coming from the top right edge so we're going to go ahead and sort of bring in a lovely bright spot here and blend that down in towards the sort of the underside almost you can reintroduce your shadows afterwards of course so don't stress too much over them then go back to your colors let's go ahead then and move to a bright tone straight away we're going to go to the sixth color on that top row we're going to go ahead and brighten up this top edge making sure our egg has a really nice bright look to it and also it might help separate it a bit more from the rabbit in behind now what you may want to do is then just reduce your brush size to eight percent so you can overlay the texture in the gaps because if you keep the brush size the same every single time the texture is implemented in exactly the same way so you end up with all these kind of effects on top so you can layer that on top how you wish we can then go ahead and let's go to our shadow color again the top left of the palette and maybe just darken up the underside down here maybe a little bit underneath our frame as well just to help separate it in our design just to make it more visually appealing like that and we've got one egg done now we can come back to this though afterwards the only thing i would probably do actually is just grab the uh, sixth color on that top row and maybe just implement a bit of a rounding highlight on this edge so i'll bring the brush size down to like four percent and where i can find the edge of the egg just there I'm just going to try and just bring in a bit of a rounding highlight just to help separate it hopefully from the other egg now i want to go ahead and jump straight to the far left egg so this one over here so i'm going to go ahead and tap on it and alpha lock it and we repeat we go to our colors we go ahead and we grab the let's grab the third color on that top row we'll go ahead and set the brush size to around about sort of nine or ten percent it's only a small area and we can go ahead and just brighten up the top edge of the egg to start with blending that down don't worry about sort of leaving that darkness you don't have to leave it straight away but you can always come back and add it in a bit more let's go to our colors let's go ahead and grab the top of the sixth column and again brighten up that top edge of your egg giving yourself a nice sort of bright patch on there like so now we've got this one that sits in behind i've left it to allow because if we tap on it and we select it we can add in some shadows in a minute to really add in some depth so let's do the same thing let's tap on it and alpha lock it let's go to our colors again grab say the top of the third column let's implement that nice sort of basic area of highlight and you'll start to see it fall in behind your other two eggs which is great we want that layering stacking sort of system then go to your colors top of the sixth column brighten up that top edge like so and then you've got your third egg now what we want to do is we want to sort of show how these shadows work here so we're going to go back to the top left of the palette where we've got this egg here i'm going to go ahead and just darken up a tiny bit in behind there really really light with my pressure i just want to show that there's a bit of a shadow there likewise i'm going to go ahead and bring the brush size down to about six percent just make sure that there's a nice dark gap i've kind of already done it but we're just making sure that there's a little bit of an understanding that there's a bit of a stacking system here so I'm going to go ahead and just kind of darken that up a bit more down here and taking a look at that we've got three beautiful nice painted in eggs now we can go ahead and work on another background element so you can collapse your eggs down it's totally up to you if you want to flatten them it's totally up to you so what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go behind our rabbit we're going to create two new layers swipe from left to right on both and group them together and we're just going to call this let's call it bg elements that's what i always call things that just sit in the background of our design the bottom layer out of the two first of all we want to open up our frame again we want to go ahead and tap on this pink circle again and tap on it and select it so we've now selected that shape we're then going to go ahead and go back up to this empty layer here for the bg elements tap on it and mask it so if we collapse our frame down again what's happened now is we've added a mask that perfectly matches the inside area of our circle meaning if we are on the layer not the mask so this area here if we go to our colors and we go ahead first of all and we grab let's start with this color here it's the bottom of the second column we're going to go back to our brush and we're going to go back into the option of drawing in the fray synet we're going to go ahead and set the brush size to three percent maximum opacity to start with and we're going to run in loads and loads of blades of grass and we can do that in a way now that's nicely contained within the boundary of our frame. So we're just keeping things nice and tidy. So I'm running in varying amounts of sizes and I wanna make sure that they definitely run in behind. Ultimately, this bottom edge here, we want to be nice and dark. Now you can, in fact, just simply squiggle that in 
darken up the majority of it and then just flick 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 even just sort of zigzag up and down on top of it just to kind of break down that original solid shape we want to have some good density in here and some nice varying amounts of height and also really framing our design so you can bring that up the edges a bit more you can really sort of bring in the sort of ground here a lot higher if you want to so what i mean by that is i'm bringing it really up and off of that edge now of course what you do on one side you want to replicate on the other so once you've kind of added in your main blades just do the same on the opposite side so get a gauge for it try and keep it in frame if you can and you'll probably end up with sort of varying lines here in comparison to the opposite side because of how your hand naturally moves so one side may feel more comfortable than the other but that's fine it'll give you some nice variation i am going to block this in quickly and then again just zigzag over the top really simple lots of them flicks and whatnot just to break down that solid shape and create that lovely grassy look like it's right in the middle of some grass and just staring right at us we want those lines to run in behind as well i'm looking at the either side and i'm looking at density as well so what i'm going to do is i'm going to rotate my canvas a tiny bit i think i can get a little bit more of a natural kind of flick from this side so i'm just going to go ahead and build that up a couple more flicks here try and build up again the density of it and we should end up with some lovely blades like so now what you can also do on these is you can get in here then and just add in some small details so if you set this to like a one or two percent brush size if we bring that down to the two mark if it wants to sit there for me it doesn't so it's fine we're just going to go ahead and just add in some variation on here like little sort of seeds of some sort you know just just something else a little bit unnatural but um a little bit more natural should i say but uneven is what i was looking for so just little sort of variations on the end of some of these like so lovely stuff let's do the same on this side too i'm just going to go ahead and bring them in a few more like so randomly placed but mostly leaning inwards so it helps focus the person's attention that's looking at this into the center of your design we should end up with this beautiful beautiful little sort of layout here and again i'm just making sure that the density down here at the bottom is nice and thick so i can just quickly add in a few more blades in here dense that up a little bit i'm looking then for the heights on either side making sure things are nice and somewhat even they don't need to be symmetrical but they need to be somewhat even now at this point you may depending on your pressure need to swipe that layer to the left and duplicate it just to thicken it up like this so you end up with more density it's totally dependent on how heavy or light you press i'm going to bring mine down the top one down to around about sort of 50 percent and then i'm just going to merge the two together now you may lose your mask so you may need to repeat the steps below so tap on this layer here select it make sure then we go up to the layer here for our grass and tap on it and mask it collapse your frame down again turn off your selection now we're just going to add in two additional tones to this we're going to tap on this top layer here clipping mask it we're going to go to our colors we're going to go ahead and blend in a few different tones here just to try and sort of darken it up and brighten it up at the same time so i'm going to grab this color here in the top left of the palette i'm going to go straight for it i'm going to go back to my brush and change it to textures in the color wong set the brush size to around about sort of 18 percent here and really really light with my pressure so you may need to lower your opacity down i want the texture in here more than anything so i'm pressing with a light pressure here just at the very bottom edge of our design just trying to bring in this area here darkening it up especially like really close to our rabbit you can really kind of nestle it in the grass by just adding a little bit of darkness around here like so and you can do it on the same layer if you wish we can go ahead and grab this color here the bottom of the third column and we can just brighten up the sort of tips here of our blades so you'll start to lose the tips of them a little bit and i don't mind that at all just kind of fading them out a little bit more into the background which i really like and then another thing we can do is if we go ahead and open up our design we can go to our layers and go down to our background group here now in here we're going to go ahead and create another new layer we're going to change the blend mode from normal to add but we're going to bring the opacity right down to 25 percent straight off the bat we're going to go to our colors we're going to grab this color here the top of the second column from the right and then same brush just in behind your rabbit we're going to go ahead and just sort of brighten up this area here so you can press a few times and just trying to create like a bit of a glow almost not necessarily a sun but just a bit of a glow in the design 
So kind of just kind of drawing a bit more attention towards the center and just brightening that up. I think it looks wicked. Now a quick fix that I would also do to my rabbit is if I open that up and I go ahead and go to this layer here where we've got all those additional shadows that sit on top of our colors. If we go back to our colors and grab the color in the top left of the palette, this is just additional based on now where the eggs are. So I've brought the brush size down to about 11%. I'm gonna just try, if not slightly smaller, 7% here, just try and darken up just in behind here to try and darken up at the very bottom of the rabbit, just maybe where shadows are being casted, etc. Now, there is one detail we're missing so far, and that is some whiskers. So let's go ahead and go back into our layers. We need to go ahead and in the rabbit group, create a new layer that is on its own right at the top. We're gonna go ahead and change our color to this color here, in fact, the middle of the fourth column from the right. Your brush wants to go back into the option of drawing and the fray synet. We're gonna make sure that brush size is probably around about one or 2% with maximum opacity. You may need to go smaller than that. And then of course, we can just flick off some beautiful whiskers. And I've, I'm gonna do a few large ones like that. And then I'm gonna add in some more dainty, thinner ones. So. A couple that really stand out will look fantastic and let them sort of fall down as well at the face here. So just a few that are a little bit lower, but a few that then are a little bit higher as well in terms of angle. So a couple here, a couple more out like so, and fill this out until you're happy with it. So I'm not sure necessarily what the correct number here is for how many, it doesn't really matter. It's just making sure that you're happy with your cute little bunny and making sure you've got some lovely little whiskers in here. Now, one thing I did in my sort of practices for this, I actually really liked it. If we, for example, take a look at how nice and yellow this is, it's totally up to you if you wanna change this. In the background here, where I've got this layer here for all our yellow, I actually ended up bringing this down to around about sort of 70% and ended up with a bit more of a white background instead of that more yellow. So if I undo that with two fingers, you can see you can end up with a more golden aesthetic to it or if I redo it, you can end up with a slightly lighter aesthetic to it. So it's totally up to you which one you prefer. Maybe you would like some in the middle of that, but that's just something that you can do if you wanna just maybe bring in a bit more of a whiter tone, less sort of yellow and saturated. And of course, make sure to go up to your layers, turn off your stencil guide right at the top. We can pinch with two fingers, we can go full screen with four, and we end up with today's finished design. So I hope you enjoyed this Easter bunny themed design. And as mentioned, today's design is sponsored by Uppercase Designs and it's Nimble Grip 2. Now, since receiving the grip, I actually haven't even taken it off. Its design is really comfortable and it gives your finger a nice big surface to rest on. And because you no longer have to take the grip off to charge, it seamlessly integrates into your normal experience of using the iPad and the Apple Pencil. I'm gonna be keeping it as part of my drawing experience and I couldn't recommend it more. And again, there's a limited time discount code which you can use using the link in the description down below. And as always, make sure to tag me in your finished creations over on Instagram. But most importantly, come and join my Discord. It's completely free to join and one of the best places where you can share any type of work that you've created, whether it's traditional Procreate work, whether it's from a tutor like myself or any other type of tutor, you can share whatever you like in there. And of course, if you want to get even more tutorials from me, you can come and join me over on Patreon, where I now have a catalog of over 100 Patreon exclusive tutorials, which you can get access to from as little as £3 or $4.50, wherever you are in the world. And you can get access to every single one of those tutorials. You can have your name featured in tutorials, sneak peeks, early access, and much, much more. So check out that in the link in the description down below. And if you like this video here on YouTube, you'll love this one on the screen now. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day, and I will see you in the next one.